Hey, it's AndyTube. I'm inserting this uh, short clip here at the beginning of the video. Uh, you can think of it as a disclaimer. I, I had this in my mind to do during the video, but I, I forgot. So I'm putting it here. Uh, in this video, I'm going to show you, among other things, how to set the resistance or tension on this uh, type of metal class 66 uh, bobbin case and I in the, in the video I mentioned and show setting it for about one ounce of uh, resistance or tension and that I, I have found that to, to be a pretty good setting but as the disclaimer part you know if I've learned anything over the last few years it's that uh, every sewing machine is different and even more so with a vintage sewing machine um, and they even though they were all made very similar at the Singer factory their life stories have varied quite a bit so um, you may have a, a machine a tension unit or a bobbin case that needs more than an ounce of tension or less than an ounce of tension to create a good balanced stitch and uh, it, it is pretty rare that you have to change tension on a bobbin case but it, it does happen so uh, just keep that in mind uh, as you watch the video and I will also at the end of the video on the final page there one of the links I will put up is to the needle thread tension unit video I did for this machine um, in case you want to work with your upper tension uh, first uh, before you delve into changing the bobbin tension okay that's that's my little disclaimer and let's get on with the uh, main part of the video and while I was working on a Singer Spartan 327k I had rebuilt the thread tension unit, cleaned it up and adjusted it, but I couldn't get a good stitch. And uh, no, no matter uh, how I adjusted the tension. So I reset it to zero and uh, started looking at the bobbin case. And this is the bobbin case. It's uh, all metal and it's uh, very common to a dozen or two models of vintage Singer sewing machines and uh, I tested it and I'll, I'll show you how I tested it and adjusted it because most of these I have found have about uh, should have about an ounce of resistance and this had less than a half ounce which which explains my stitching problem to me and so I thought um, I you know I, I disassembled it actually and cleaned it put it back together and set it for an ounce and everything was great and I started thinking, I, it's hard to keep track because I have about 450 plus videos. But I don't think I've ever done a video talking about how to disassemble this type of bobbin case and clean it. Um, or if you have a bad spring or a stripped out screw or whatever. So I, I thought I would do a video like this. I'm going to take it apart and show you the different parts and screws and how I clean it and put it back together and then I'll show you a little seven dollar gauge I use a ten tenso meter to, to set it at about an inch tension so um, I when I took it out of the machine we'll take it out and like I said I tested it and I found it was way too uh, loose so um, let me get one of my screwdrivers here. There's two screws on a uh, bobbin case like this. And even the, the newer Apollo plastic one has this. There's a smaller screw here on the end. And that is used to attach this uh, tension spring to the bobbin case. And then uh, next to it, to the left, is a larger screw. And by turning that in and out, you adjust for more or less tension. 
on that spring and that that tension spring of course when when you put your uh, bobbing in with with the uh, thread coming off um, counterclockwise you drop that in and you pull the thread into this slot whoops pull the thread into this first slot here or the lower slot and you pull it up and that puts the thread between the tension spring and the side of the bobbin case so you get it under that spring and then there's usually another little notch or a smaller slot that you bring the thread up out and then uh, you, you would lay the thread like that and lower and raise your needle to pull that bobbin thread up okay so if if this spring is damaged um, or if the out of adjustment or the thread can be stripped and even if you set it at a good tension uh, after vibrating and everything in the machine that thread uh, that threads on the screw can loosen then you lose your tension and it can also get a build up of lint and dirt in there between and uh, cause you to th the same kind of thing you can't really set your tension well if at all so um, when, to, to disassemble this let's see if I can get some good lighting here so that I'm going to uh, first loosen the adjusting screw and like I said that is usually the bigger screw and uh, it's a few more turns than you think normally when it's adjusted in there all the way you'd have uh, nine or ten turns to get it out and these are little dinky screws I mean look at that man that is a little guy you know so uh, I, I use a little magnetic dish I bought at the dollar store but you can use a cup or something but don't just lay it on your work surface because they have a tendency to sneak away now that I have that off uh, you can see that this uh, spring kind of moves around a little bit now because it's just being held on by the mounting uh, screw it gives you a little bit better idea of how that spring looks but then I'm going to take out the smaller screw which is the mounting screw and I guess you could do this in the opposite order I've always just done the adjusting screw first and then the mounting screw there's a little bit smaller screw believe it or not <laughs> So, there, there's my two little screws, safe, Whoop. and there's my spring stuck on the magnet, <laughs> okay, see if I can get this down here and get you a look at it. Now, there are still places that you can buy um, replacement springs and even the screws um, I'm trying to think I, I think uh, Jenny at so classic I think recently I've seen uh, screws uh, sewing parts online Central Michigan sewing if you if you look around online and on eBay and uh, some of the sewing parts stores like that the chances are very good you could you could find a replacement um, I know years ago I had bought because I do a lot of the 401, 403, 404, 500s I have bought like a half a dozen of each screw in the spring just thinking I, I wanted to have parts on hand because they weren't very expensive I think I bought those 18 parts for like $25 or $35 back then so um, now I will also, I'll also show you this case here 
um, so that you can you can see the screw holes right and then you see that slot that that thread is going into see that first slot it's like at about a 45 degree angle and it goes way deep down to get it behind that tension spring and then you're going to bring it up out that little notch and you see a hole down here at this end and on the end of the tension spring there's like a little um, boy I don't know if you'll be able to see it but there's a little bend in the end like a little hook and I have seen those broken off and people saying I I keep adjusting my tension like you told me but it won't it won't stay uh, after I sew a little bit the tension is gone and that's because this little tab on the end the, the little hook part has broken off but when you when you put it on that's what hooks into that hole and then you screw it back on and that that hook puts the the anchor on that end so to speak so that when you tighten it down it's not just a one end of the spring tight against the bobbin case it's actually hooking the other end in there now when I took this off there was some black smudge and lint and stuff down in here and that's not uncommon and it can build up here under the spring too so uh, I just cleaned it I just put the parts in a cup like this and I use about a, a 15 or 20 percent solution of my crud cutter that I that I like for cleaning you know but you could use a soapy water or alcohol if you ever do uh, take the spring or screws out you, you might as well go ahead and give it a good uh, cleaning you know uh, where that spring is mounted and also where this edge here which turns into a slot here that sits on the race of the hook and that's how the hook can spin around the bobbin case because the, the, the bobbin case doesn't move the hook spins around it on this uh, shelf here and then the, the bobbin turns as the thread comes off okay so uh, I, I scrubbed it all up right and uh, then the little uh, spring just soaking it in something like that usually cleans it all up and gets all the muck off of it so it's very very easy very simple and then you want to dry it good and uh, I usually don't do anything with the screws I, they're just I mean I guess if you're real careful you can clean them I usually don't I just they're just so tiny and have a tendency to fly away I remember at a lady's house a friend of my wife her sewing room she still had a short shag carpet and uh, I had set the two screws on a piece of paper and somebody came in and picked up that paper to, they thought it was in my way and the screws went off into that shag carpet man so uh, we, we finally got a handheld vacuum and vacuumed the area and like a foot at a time and then emptied the vacuum and searched until we found the screws so okay then it's very easy to, to, to reassemble this. You have it clean and dry. 
and uh, we're going to put that spring back in with the little hook in that hole right and in the hole and then when you do that hopefully your two screw holes will line up then you then we're going to take the tiniest screw and believe me these are both really tiny and I have I have this uh, uh, tension screwdriver kind of magnetized so that hopefully man look how tiny these are. I gotta set this down I can't get this on here with one hand Look at that, wow. For an old shaky guy like me, man, that's a dangerous, dangerous thing there. A little tiny screw. Okay, whoop. I can see I'm going to be editing this, huh? <laughs> Try and get it started back in there. It's... Uh, kind of painstaking but I mean you can't give up you got to get it back together right so if you push real hard on the spring you might be blocking the screw from going in and sometimes uh, it has helped me to have somebody else do this <laughs> Sometimes turning the screw uh, to the left first can help seat it in there. But it's a very tiny screw, so just try and be a patient with it. A little ticky tacky thing. Once the screw's in there and you know it's not going to fall out come down and check and make sure that your little hooked end is in the hole there okay that it's not uh, sitting on top of the uh, bobbin case that it's actually hooked into the little hole here and then uh, go ahead and tighten that up not hard but just till it stops turning you want just a little bit of leeway on the spring when you put this other screw in and believe it or not this little dinky screw is, let me try my other screwdriver here has a little fatter blade um, this little dinky screw is the bigger of the two <laughs> And it, it turns right to tight. And this, the same thing, if, if you don't feel like it's going in easily, try turning it to the left a little bit first to, to get the thread to seat. And don't force it. It, it, shouldn't, it should be very easy to, you know, once it hits the threads to go in. It's not difficult at all. Um, to screw in once it's started so don't be tempted to force it in your frustration and and strip off the uh, screws so when you get that in I'm going to say uh, tighten it until you just feel some resistance in it you know it doesn't uh, just lightly tighten it I guess because you're going to have to set the resistance you're going to have to set the <laughs> the one ounce on here but now we've got both um, both of the screws back in and we have our little hook in the hole so then I'm going to go back and I want to be sure I have my mounting screw tightened completely nice and firm 
you can you can put some pretty good pressure on it of course you don't want to strip it but you don't want it to be um, loose in any way okay now that looks pretty good and it's all clean and, and shiny and there's no gunk behind the spring anymore so all we need to do now is um, adjust the the resistance or the tension on it to try and hit about an ounce right so let me reset the camera up here and I'll show you my little tenso meter and how easy it is to set it for uh, one ounce so here's this little tenso meter I bought online I think it was 695 and uh, you can buy some commercial quality tension bob and tension meters for about forty or fifty dollars but this one has worked well for me on this side the reading is ounces see it's OZ and as you come down it's scaled off and right there is a half ounce and right there is one ounce and then it's uh, one and a half two three and four so what I'm looking for is the meter to be right about there at about an ounce and the way this does you you have to hold it or hang it on something you know you have to and then it's got the oh and the, the other side here is in uh, grams because some of the instructions will say, well, you should have a 25 gram pull on it, you know. So this is in grams from 0 to 100. Okay, and I, I just usually go for about an ounce, especially to start with. And then it has this little uh, clip that you clip onto the thread, right? So... When, when you're in a, the other style of bobbin case that usually takes a, a, what I call a class 15 bobbin, you know, that, that bobbin holder is kind of made to sit like this, and it's very easy. You put the bobbin in and put the case cap over it and just pull the string out the top. This, is, this one sits on the horizontal plane. So you can either... Uh, try and pull the tensile meter away usually what I do is slant it so that I can pull the tensile meter up but you, you you put your bobbin back in with your thread and you and you thread the bobbin just just like you would when it's in the machine put it in the first slot and out the second and boy that resistance feels feels pretty low so I think before I even test it I'm going to just snug that up a little bit because when I I mean an ounce of tension isn't much right but it just felt like it didn't have any okay that feels like more than an ounce but we'll see so the the trick with this is you have to hold the bobbin case without any part of your fingers touching the bobbin because it has to be free to turn right it has to be free so you can't you can't have your finger touching on the bottom or the or the side here you have to hold the case without touching the bobbin okay a little tricky then I'm gonna go near to the case and clip on my little clip for the thread and I'm going to hold my tenso meter here so that my ounce is showing and maybe I'll try and pull the bobbin case down oh, get the thread where it should be I'll try and pull the bobbin case down instead of the tenso meter up so the tenso meter oh it's going it's only hitting about a half so I'm gonna go in here 
usually when you when I, I usually will adjust it by about a quarter of a turn especially when I get close um, you know it doesn't take when you're close like a, a complete half turn could go way past where you're hoping to to be with our little one quarter turn adjustment let me try this again here we should be getting very close uh, I would say to the one inch here make sure I don't touch the bobbin uh, one ounce not one inch oh that looks good doesn't it so I went from a half to about one and a half so I'll come back that was a quarter turn so I will come back about an eighth of a turn <laughs> and we'll try that now I have gone through this process on some of my wife's machines when she's wanted to sew some very uh, heavy uh, duck cloth or uh, ballistic nylon and things like that and I've kind of had to do this because those thicker uh, threads really that should have been on a commercial machine uh, th these machines will handle it you know the sewing but it was too much bobbin tension so let's see again now okay so I'm about I'm over one I, I would say I'm about one and a quarter ounce I'm going to try one more little tweak and uh, see if I can get it real close to an ounce although one and a quarter that is not bad it certainly beats the the half inch but I got it inch I keep saying inch and I'm sorry it certainly beats the half ounce that I found it to be at when I before I cleaned it and everything when I was having problems sewing but I had I got it uh, right at an ounce before so I think I'll be able to do it again okay. let's see now I got my thumb stuck on the bobbin that's why hmm now see I could edit all this out but I want you to realize it is a finicky little process but normally when you get your bobbin case set good it's not going to change uh, much over the years now I went back I should have left it uh, uh, closer to the one and a quarter one last little tweak here about a sixteenth of a turn right <laughs> and let's see mm -hmm. get my bobbin case turned properly like so how it's going to feed off of there and there we go right at the inch you see yeah very nice see I had it there before I mean it might have been a tiny bit over the inch I said inch again over the ounce um, marker but it's very very close to an ounce and when I got it there before it an ounce and then so then my tension was uh, more normal I could set the upper tension, you know, anywhere between three and five for straight stitch and down to about two for wide zigzag and uh, it worked fine then. So, that's how I uh, clean and adjust the tension on a vintage uh, Singer class 66 bobbin case and 
Apollo bobbin case is a class 66 and it's very similar to this it follows the same design but it's just made out of plastic but it has a metal a tension um, spring and screws and it would adjust the same way and like I said most of the ones that I have come across uh, one ounce is a very good setting one ounce of resistance and I believe I read that in an old uh, manual. I'm not sure, but it seems like I did. I may have read a blog online or something. Come back and see me, okay? Take care.